there we go hello everybody and welcome back hi how are you guys doing hope everything's fine we are back with a new series and we are going to talk about the Maroxi in this new series and we're going to see a few games uh, we're just going to see games we're not going to look at theory but just some ideas and games for both colors um, we're just going to start with the Accelerated Dragon that you have right now on the board because it's something that Sophie plays as well, so I think she will uh, benefit from this <laughs> a lot. Yes, and I think I play something a little bit suspicious right now against the Maraxi <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should learn something that's just, at least just learn some more ideas and look at some great games so uh, I can uh, extend my repertoire and ideas. <laughs> We're actually starting with a classical game today, uh, Keras versus Petrosian. Yeah. And uh, we're going to look at, at the ideas that Petrosian played there. But first I wanted to, to tell you what the Maroxi is, because I don't know if everybody knows what the Maroxi is. The Maroxi is actually this structure that we have here on the board with C4 and D4, that white can play against different um, lines of the Sicilian of, for black. Here we have the accelerated dragon structure where, where black has just played the dragon here with the pawn on d6. Can also be played against the hedgehog and we're going to see that and I think against other Sicilians. And you can get it from different move orders. You can get it from 1e4, you can get it from white 1c4, 1 knight f3, um, and I think even 1d4 in some, yeah. in some lines. So it's a very important one. White uh, brings these pawns over here to stop the main um, rupture that black has, which is d5. So he's playing for a control over the center and for space. So why would black play this <laughs> if there's no space? Well, we have plans with black as well. Our ruptures are b5, d5, and f5. And the positions are very interesting. Yes, black plays with less space, but uh, whenever he gets to play b5 or even d5, that's a very nice rupture to get, um, the position changes completely. And f5 is also interesting in some, some positions. We'll just see that you can also switch between plans. I think key in these positions is to play slow, just don't rush things with both colors. Because for white, we will see a lot in the hedgehog that you can overextend, you can think that you have this whole lot of space and that your opponent is not doing anything so you would just push your pawns but you are creating weaknesses in your position and the opponent can just strike back at the right moment so um this is uh, it about the maroxi and the structure so now let's move on to the game and Great. i'm going to upload the game here Keras versus petrosian we're going to see it from black's perspective today and let's go. E4, C5, Knight of Oops. Oh, it's just jumping. Yeah, it's jumping. And now it's back, I think. Yeah. Is it back for you? <laughs> it's back for me now. <laughs> I was just checking. It's, I have the starting position. Yes. So here, Knight of 3, Knight C6, D4, takes, takes. And here, G6, this is the accelerated dragon. Yes. G6 before D6. The point of this move order is for black to get D5 in one move. That's the difference between the dragon and the accelerated dragon, that you don't play d6 and then d5, but you want to play d5 in one move. Um, the downside of the accelerated dragon is that white has the option of c4 that he wouldn't normally have if we go for the dragon. Mm. Now, after c4, we have two ways of playing. The first one is to just get the pieces out. Uh, with knight f6, bishop d7, d6, castle, and so on, which is what we're going to see today. And then you have the option of taking on d4 quickly, which is known as the Gurgenidze line. And it's also something okay. that you can play. I don't know which one you use, Sophie. Uh, I've never taken directly on, on d4. Not in this position, uh, but here, mm -hmm. I mean. Uh... Yeah, no, usually I actually just finish that I play the bishop g7 and castle and then uh, sometimes later I might take on d4. Mm, yeah, so you play yeah. the, the classical line. Yeah. yeah bishop g7. Yeah, that's, that's what we're going to see today. Bishop g7. 
but I want to tell you a few words about this. So here on IC3, uh, D6. The move order is something that's important in the Maroxi. It might look like you are getting to the same structure all the time and to the same position, but there are a few uh, finesses that you have to know. So here on D6, for example, we most of the time delay uh, taking on D4 if we want to take on D4 because Bishop E3 is not something that white can play after we go because D6. Of, yeah. Because of Knight G4? Because of knight g4, yes. Yeah. So if white wants to play this setup, then they will have to play something like f3 here or bishop e2 first. Both moves are possible. Mm. And there are uh, different setups. This f3 idea is very interesting. And there's another classical game that I'm going to show you here from white's perspective, um, where white wins with the bishop pair, a very nice game. We're going to see this in a different, uh, on a different day, in a different lesson. And there's also knight c2 that you have to be aware of. This is something yeah. that can be a little annoying for the Maroxi players. And I actually like more the setup with bishop g7 first because we get a better version of knight c2 with black. We'll see that when we get to knight c2. Um, but let's see the, the line with bishop e2, which is main line here. Now we take on d4, queen takes d4, and bishop g7. This is the Gurganitze line, and in this line white can play either bishop e3 or bishop g5 in this, at this point here or here. Um, bishop e3 is most played, and one of the main lines, very old as well, is this one. Queen d2, bishop e6. White usually, this is another important thing. White usually plays these moves quite fast. Rook c1, b3, and f3. He wants to, to have these pawns defended because there are different tactics against them at some point, especially against the pawn on e4 uh, with a queen on a5. Uh, in these types of uh, position, like the one we have here, mm -hmm. when we play the bishop three six, is it, I mean, we should, in sometimes in these uh, sort of games, I can be a little bit worried about bishop h6, but that's not really a problem because the dark squared bishop is also the best piece bishop that white has, right? Yeah. So... And that is actually something that we are trying hard to do, to achieve, yeah. to trade that dark squared bishop with black. Uh, we want our dream position, let's say, would be a bishop with a good knight versus uh, a bad bishop. Yeah. So we want and the, the bad bishop would have to be the light squared here. The light squared bishop. Yeah. Here. So we basically want <clears throat> a position where white has pawns here and this bishop, which will be a terrible bishop. And we have this great knight and we, mm. we control the dark squares. And this knight can even find a, a great spot here on d4. Let's make this one green. Yeah. And you will dominate on, on dark squares. That's our dream. Uh, it's good to have a dream. We're, yeah. we're, not, <laughs> we're not always going to get that. But <laughs> no, but then you know what you should. Uh, you work know what towards. you should get to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And another thing that White must be careful about here is that whenever they play b3 with the rook on a1, again there are tactics like. Yeah. Right now, if b3, we can take on e4. Mm. So this move right now. We have knight e4. Yeah. And this is the reason why rook c1 is something that they play first before weakening anything. We don't want tactics there. So now queen a5 and here f3. This move uh, defends e4 and it prepares knight to d5. This is a jump that white usually wants. Okay. So what do we do now? We play rook c8. This rook, almost always, almost always this rook, because we will see that our tactics against our queen on a5 and the pawn on e7. I will show you this later with knight d5. Mm. And almost always this rook, because most of the times you want to push a6 and b5. So you need both rooks here. Sometimes you, you need the rook on f8, but those are different lines when you push for f5. But most of the times rook fc8 is what we do. Mm. b3. And here after a6, we are already threatening to go b5. For example, in, uh, in case white castles. 
here if I remember correctly b5 is already a move because a2 is hanging and we don't have to worry about stuff like knight d5 then no and that's why it's good to have the rook on c8 because on knight d5 with the rook f on c8 you can take here and then on uh, and if knight takes on e7 you have king f8 ah, and then which you yeah, didn't okay. have with the rook a on c8 <laughs> Ah, now I see the point. Okay, that's a good. Uh, I think I've fall, I usually think I I've often taken the other rook, and uh, I've seen how there's a good point in in it is. There's a good point. One. This is the main point, but of course this rook is yeah. useful on a8 because it looks at at a2 in these lines. Okay. Oh, sorry. I just saw somebody on Twitch uh, asking what we are studying here, uh, and we're looking at uh, Maroxi structures this time for black. Looking at a game, right? With you say Petrosian Keras. Yeah, uh, Keras Petrosian, yeah. Keras Petrosian, that way around, yeah. Yeah, now I see the Twitch. For some reason, the chat wasn't loading for me, but now I hope it will work. I just refreshed. It's good that you're keeping an idol. <laughs> yeah, also there was a question about F4, but maybe we can take that later. Uh, yes, or maybe we can look at that in a different... Uh, because yeah. F4 is possible, but in different positions, I think. Uh, not here. So, um, here you can take on d2, that's the point, and yeah. white must take, right, bishop takes d2, uh, and at this point you can take on d5 with an equal position, c takes okay. d5. Now remember that here it's important to give a check, just to keep the king away from the center, and then you move the bishop. Um, yeah, it was just loading a little bit slowly, but yeah, I think I, we, so we played bishop d4, and then we took with the knight on uh we no, took, I'm just going to go... We took with the knight on d5 first, and then we give the check. Bishop d4 check. And then we move the, and yeah, we okay. move the bishop. Yeah. yeah. And this is equal, I think, maybe slightly better for black, but about equal. Mm. We just... Uh, the, uh, we have a lot of play on the queen side. This is supposed to be good for black. So, here on a6, the main line that... Uh, used to be played. I know that uh, the theory has changed a little bit. But the main line that um, was played here is knight a4. So Ooh. this trades queens and here knight b6 is a threat. And here yeah. knight d7 defending and here white starts with g4. f5 is the move, g takes and here rook g1, and now bishop h6 is a threat, and here there are many games, king h8 is our move to get out of here, white can play bishop d3, white can play knight c3, just coming back and playing for d5, with a complicated game. You will find many games from this position. Yeah. Many of them. This used to be the main line, there are other ways, more modern ways to play this for white, but I think we will uh, look at that later we're just going to go back to our game now so c4 here i was telling you that the move order is important mm. here's an example of move order in the importance of move order here you can start with d6 it seems uh, equal no it's just knight c3 and you know that okay i'm going to take on d4 play knight f6 bishop g7 and you can just take on d4 here thinking that knight f6 and i'm playing bishop g7 next and i get to the same place right uh yeah but with, unless <laughs> unless unless something <laughs> happens and this is why move order if bishop e2 bishop g7 yes we are simply transposing bishop e3 is the same but at this point uh white doesn't have to play bishop e2 he has other moves that's the difference in our in, a, in the other position with the knight on c6 white didn't have that many let's say useful moves and here there is this move c5 that's a little bit annoying Especially if you don't know what to do. Yeah. Because here, I think bishop g7 is what black needs to play. Um, because if if we were to take it... Yes, if we were um, to take it, then this is annoying. White, in some lines, stays with the pawn down. But the king on d8 and the lack of development can, uh, can be difficult to play with. Hmm. So... 
what here? Bishop e3 is what white does, attacking c5. So I think that here if we took that pawn and have the king on d8, uh, the most logical thing to ask is why not keep the pawn? Let's just, what happens if I keep the pawn? But here you'll castle, see that. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see how everything comes with check, no? Bishop f4. Mm. You have to move here. Now this one comes with check, with, well, not check, but tempo. Mm. Knight moves away. And here bishop g5. We still can't, can't develop this bishop. Oh, it's bishop e7 here. Yeah. And let's say knight g7 going to f5. And here bishop e2 and bishop c6. I think at this point black must give up the exchange. Yeah, it looks, uh, doesn't look very nice for black. I it agree. doesn't. I think it's no. very difficult to play. Yeah. For black at least. Maybe the computer will find something, but when you play this in a game, everything comes with tempo and you just need to defend. Here you don't have this because of rook d8. And <laughs> you're getting very nicely checkmated. Yeah. Like king c7. Uh, of course, you can take on a8, but but this one I found very pretty. It takes here and here. And, and there's... Then there's no way of stopping rook d1. Yeah, and knight c7. <laughs> oh. Well, there is, I think... Is there a way of stopping? No, I don't think so. Maybe knight e6. Yeah. But okay, the rook on a8 oh, is gone. A, yeah. <laughs> Still, it's it's very, very bad. This is losing. So this is just an example of how things can go wrong if you're not paying attention to the move order. Um, so here there's also knight d7 if you want to try, but again, castle and how are you going to develop here? I uh, White is rene renewing the threat of bishop takes c5. Yeah. Come on. Okay. And it really makes it hard at not being able to castle. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so can we just uh, very quick um, recap what move order would be not the correct, but like the easier one to to choose? So the move order would be if you want to play this Gurgenitsa line, would be knight f6, threaten the pawn. So basically, if you want the Gurgenitsa line, you want the queen to take back on d4. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. Because then you play bishop g7 and you win a tempo over the queen. So okay. you're not go if you play bishop g7, you play a different line. So okay. here you play with tempo, first knight here to attack on, on e4. Let me draw some arrows here. White must play knight c3 here. And now we play d6. Because there's yes. no bishop e3. You're still playing and against. Is it, uh, what about going bishop g7 uh, before d6? No, I think if you go bishop g7, black, white can go bishop e3. Okay. So you're not playing the, the Gurgenitsa line. Okay. That's all. It's not a, a big thing. It's just if you want to play that line here, you're not going to play it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you're going to play a different one, which is fine. Yeah. But, so here d6. Bishop e2 or f3, and now is the moment to take on d4 and play bishop g7. Yeah, got it. Okay, now let's go back to our game, yes. which which was with bishop g7. Bishop g7, mm. bishop e3. Here, by the way, we have another line that we are going to discuss, knight c2. Now we were actually talking about this line, me and Sophie, and some ideas here. But let's start with the beginning with the most uh, common thing, bishop e3. So here you can actually play d6 or knight f6. Uh, it doesn't make much difference anymore, knight c3. And here the normal uh, line is d6. This is the main line. And there is also bishop, knight g4, another move that you have to um, be aware of. I've played that a few times. You have uh, played this one, yeah. This yes, is the game, actually. I think actually. it's called the Ben Larsen variation. OK. Uh, it's it's quite and I, on blitz I can say it's it's pretty effective because a lot mm. of uh, players just take and c six and then 
I think black is already uh, oh, not I, not, I've but like a bit better. Yeah, I've never seen Knight A6. I have to say, I've, I have played uh, Knight G4 with black, but nobody played Knight C6 against me. <laughs> Why no, not? <laughs> I, mean, I had. Uh, I think it happens this is point, quite yeah? a bit in Blitz to me at least, but. Uh, most people know that they're supposed to take on d4 and mm. put the queen back. Yeah. And take on d1. Yeah, and this is... This is nice because we have the bishop nice. there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of exchanges and like uh, we changed, what do you call We exchanged a lot of pieces. So yeah. yeah, I think this is, this would be nice to have always, but... For black, yes. Yeah. And this is another dream position, maybe. <laughs> And I'm I'm still dreaming about getting it. I've never gotten it. I feel so. <laughs> oh yeah, you have to. <laughs> I have to insist, maybe. <laughs> play some more <laughs> online. Maybe you'll get it. Maybe nine g four. Maybe I haven't played nine g four enough times. <laughs> no, that's a, it's all about just doing things enough times. Then they, <laughs> you'll get there. <laughs> uh, I think nine g four also got some popularity because uh, there's a book about the accelerated dragon where this line is Ooh. recommended nine g four. But, um, okay, the positions are also uh, difficult here, queen d1, and at this, in our game we'll see knight e6, but e5 is another way of playing, I think more modern, mm. where keeping the knight on d4, castling. It's interesting, but um, I didn't find it that easy to play with black. No. I have to say that in a classical game, uh, it's a bit suffering. There are some ideas that you have to know where white plays f4 at some point. But let me show you the main, main, main line, which is d6. <clears throat> so now we want to play knight g4. White has to do something about this. This will be bishop e2 or f3. And we're going to do the same. Castle, castles. And here we play bishop d7. Again, important uh, move order. Bishop d7 first. The point of bishop d7 is that you want to take on d4 and bring the bishop on c6. Yeah. And then put a pawn on a5, and this is our setup, a knight on c5. So what happens if you take first on d4? Doesn't look like much, but there are very tiny differences always. Here bishop d4, bishop d7, and now white has the option of going queen d3. And the point of this is that if you go bishop c6 in this position, you're not coming with tempo on e4. Uh, white didn't have to waste a move, queen d2 or queen d and queen d3. And they can play b4. Yeah. So it's a little bit annoying. If you're just playing the moves out fast without thinking, you get b4 and you are very, very uncomfortable here. Yeah, I don't know what I would do <laughs> with my pieces here. Like, uh, c5 is surely not going to happen anymore, like putting a piece there. No, no. Mm. And uh, no, I think here we are just worse with black. Okay. And it will just get worse. You can, of course, play b6 here, but you're already giving up too much. So what you would have to play here is a5, though. And then you kind of kind of transpose it's a little bit different uh, all the time because here f4 is an option yeah and it's it's a completely different line where white and can then if we go for the knight d7 we do go for knight d7 okay here knight d7 is the move but it's completely different because here white can start um things on the on the king side and bishop g4 is uh, in many lines an idea to, to get mm. this bishop out and trade it for the knight on d7 <clears throat> it can be played but i don't find it so easy to play <laughs> no <laughs> it's different plans different ideas something that i at least don't want with black so bishop g7 first is uh Bishop d7 first, because here white has to make a useful move. And these useful moves would normally be queen d2 or f3. So now mm. you understand why you want bishop d7 first, because in both cases, you win a tempo over the other line. Whether it's queen d2 or f3, it's going to be better, no? So here queen d2 is actually the main line, takes, takes. 
and yeah, here yeah. after bishop c6 it's a tempo there's no b4 coming if white wants to play queen d3 okay but they lost the tempo we're going to go a5 mm. nobody's going to play queen d3 here anymore uh, f3 is the main line and now you go first uh, a5 usually mm. again to not give the option of b4 b3 and knight e7 and here bishop e3 is the main line for white taking on g7 is not considered to be that good uh, because we get to that uh, possibility of getting an endgame with a good knight versus a, uh, a bad bishop on e2. Yeah, so if the white knight ever jumps on d5, we just take it and mm -hmm. it's better. Yeah, we usually take that knight and we look forward to trading queens here with black. Yeah. Trade queens off and keep the good knight, something that we're going to see in another lesson as well. But bishop e3 is the main line, and here knight c5, and this is the typical position that you would get in a Maroxi, and it's very similar to the one we get in the game. So I'm just going to go to the game and see how Petrosian played this. Yeah. So let's go back to our game here, where he, knight c3, knight g4, queen takes, and takes here on d4. <laughs> no Benoni today, just Maroxi. <laughs> Queen to d1 and knight e6 he plays. d6, bishop e2, bishop d7, and you see that we're getting to the same setup, rook c1, and bishop c6. Oh, so you know, I'll just miss. Can you just go back after um, after we take on g4? Mm, oh no, after yeah. we play uh, knight g4? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then knight takes d. For yeah. uh, queen d1. Yes, queen d1. And, and then he plays queen d2 next move after. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just missed when he played that because it was a little Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you play knight. Because he played knight. Otherwise, if they play something else, if they play, mm. uh, I don't know if they play um, yeah, after queen d1, you knight mean? e6. Ah. If they then play something like bishop e2, then. We can say on c3, right? Yeah. I think we can do that here. That's right. That's a good point. So they want to protect it with... So they want queens. to play queen d2. That's a good point. This is yeah. something that... An idea that we are going to see. Giving up this precious bishop. Yeah, it's so... Uh, <laughs> it's not what dragon players are used to, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, it's oh, not... Lefang is here. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I should have guessed that when somebody was asking for the Benoni. Do I prefer the line with knight e6 over e5 and why? It's not that I, I prefer it, it's just uh, this is the game that we see, uh, we are seeing today. I'm I'm not a fan of the line with knight g4 in general. <laughs> I prefer the lines with d6, to be honest. I play with e5 and I didn't feel very comfortable here. I've never tried with e5. But I have to say that it was just my first time playing it, so maybe I wasn't very familiar to the positions. I think I would handle the positions much better now. I think yeah. uh, I think I played it again. And I actually won a game like this with black, so I'm probably <laughs> maybe getting better at it. No, it's just uh, knight g4 is maybe something that you play if you get too bored of the main lines. But I prefer the main line actually. And here I want to get to the other position, queen d2 and d6. Yeah, you yeah. suffer a lot in those structures as black, but when you play in the Benoni, you are used to suffer. I have to say, I I don't play the Benoni, but I also sometimes suffer as black. But have you tried... Okay, I like a line in the in these structures, the one with bishop e5, uh, but I think we're going ahead of ourselves. That line is a line that I like for black. Uh, Iturisaga plays it a lot. We're, yeah. going to, we're going to see, slowly, just take first the main ideas. Bishop e2... Bishop d7, castles, and rook c1. And now bishop c6. This is the the move that, mm, that we wanted to get. That black plays here. But is this the right way to do things? So in this position, what should white play actually? b4? b4, yeah. Because 
we only have one piece on e4. Yeah, that's right. So here bishop c6 is not exactly the right move order. b4 is coming and you don't... Okay, if you play a5, then b5 is coming. And this is just horrible. Knight a4. We're gonna get a knight on b6. That's not going to be knight. nice. Why didn't the bishop take the knight? Um, oh, here, after b4. Okay, why don't we take on c3? I think that's the question in this position. Take on c3 and take on e4. Oh, I think but it's uh, just, bishop it's h6 still dangerous, is coming. Right? <laughs> I think bishop h6 is coming up next. Yeah. Can take like this, bishop e4 and bishop h6. Isn't this terrifying? Yes. It is a little bit, yeah? Okay, you can play rook e8, but bishop g4 is coming. Yeah. Is that the move that I want to play on rook e8? And bishop g4 and rook e1. I think bishop this G4 is very looks dangerous. Good. Yeah, bishop g4 looks uh, very, very... I'm just thinking that on bishop scary. g4, f5. But we still play rook e1, I guess. I think this is still f5 and rook e1. And now white threatens to take an on e4. e4. And then yeah. here. Yeah. I think you don't want to give uh, your precious bishop just for this. No, we have to at least <laughs> get <laughs> some bad pawn structure. And I don't, can I just ask, electric horse? Are you eccentric horse? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Because I remember eccentric horse, but maybe, <laughs> maybe you're electric horse now. <laughs> Lots of horses. Yeah. No. So here we don't want yeah. to take this. We don't want to do yeah. this. But that's a good question, though. Yeah. Only if white is forced to take back with the pawn, maybe. We usually take that if it's white. Okay. <laughs> there are some lines where you win that pawn, but it's different. You take it with a knight, but not. Maybe rook f e one first. Yeah, I think you mean here, no? On bishop h6, rook e8, maybe rook e1 first. That's a tricky move, no? Interesting here, rook e1. You're just here? setting here after yeah. rook e8, yeah. yeah. Setting up bishop g4, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe that's a more sneaky way to. <laughs> sneaky way to do things. Yeah. Also good, probably. Yeah, so here white had the option of playing b4, which he missed. It's also a very old game, so it's. It's understandable. It's from 59, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. 59. So here what we had to do is a5. Remember oh. this. First stop the idea of b4, knight c5 next, and bishop c6. But white played rook d1, and here we have our position. Now he goes knight c5. The pawn is threatened. Must play f3. And a5. b3. Yeah. So that's our position. That... <laughs> so that's uh, that's the position that we have. So there you have your answer, Sophie. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, good to have you back, electric, like eccentric horse. So yeah, the YouTube uh, chat is saying that H three is one of the new main lines. Yes, H three is one of the new main lines, but we're not going to go into that now. We just want to see some ideas Ooh. for now. And we're going to slowly get there. Would a6 prevent b5? Thorben is asking. Hold on. So here, no? In this position where we are talking about b5? b4, I mean. Yeah. a6. I think a6 does prevent b5, but on the other hand, we're not making it to c5. So that's yeah. the annoying part about this with black. That your And still is... something about the, the dark squares becomes very... Uh... I always have trouble on the b6 squares when mm. I... Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. The b6 square is uh, soft. No, yeah. I think here white will simply continue bringing pieces out. Rook fd1. The question is, what are we doing with black? Yeah, you can play moves, but like we can play rook b8, we can play queen d7. 
that I think it's uh, very easy for white to put a knight on d5 and to push the queen side. That's the whole point. I mean, this is something that white would like. Take here, take with the pawn and c5. Mm. It's just really bad for black. And it's something that we try to avoid as black here. So let's go back here. f3, a5, b3. And now we, we will see one of the typical plans, which is queen b6. The point of this move, queen b6, is to play queen b4 next, and then mm. a5. a5 to a4, I mean. Put some pressure. But before we do that, we must put a rook on c8, so that our queen is not left unprotected on b4. You'll see. Okay. So here there are options for, uh, for black. In the game, he played knight b5, which is simply stopping queen to b4. But there is another plan that usually uh, white can go for here. And it's this very nice setup with rook c2 that I actually like for white. Whenever I play with white, I like it. <laughs> so now if we go queen b4, the thing is that now knight d5 can happen. Yes. And again, the same trick. We don't have queen takes d2 because of this check on. Yeah. No king f8. Yeah, no king f8. You already know this. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good that I've, I've fallen for this uh, lots of times. And you can fall for this in many <laughs> lines. In the knight c2 line, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can also fall for this. Uh, so no queen before. You have to start with rook c8 first. And now you'll see the point of rook c2. What white usually tries to, to do is rook b1. And on queen b4, queen c1. So this little setup here uh, prevents a4. How does that prevent a4? Well, if we go a4 now, a3. Hmm. And everything is defended. b3 is defended, a3 is defended. And now he's going to get b4. Mm -hmm. That's not nice. And that's not nice. Unless the knight can jump, jump to b3, but I guess it's not really... I think you're losing a piece. Oh, there. oh, yeah, okay, I'm yeah. losing a piece, that's true. This is just losing a piece. Mm, yeah, it is. So it doesn't work at all here. No. <laughs> no, but here if white goes for this setup, what you usually do with black is just queen b6 and we start over. <laughs> Remember that patience is key here. So now you would go back to <laughs> queen d8 and you would go for the plan yeah. that Petrosian plays. In this game. Did this happen in the game? Uh, oh, is no, this... He didn't, okay. He didn't play rook c2 and rook b1. I just wanted to show you this uh, idea, since we are seeing for both sides. You know what this... So you know what this wants. Rook yeah. b2 and rook d1. Um, okay, and there was something else that I wanted to show you here, that on queen b4, right. What if knight d5 here? After rook c8. So here's the trick, no? Queen takes d2. Yeah. Now there's no knight e7 because of king f8. We've seen this earlier as well. King f8 wins the knight. So then bishop takes d2. And here we take on d5. C takes d5 and we get to play e4. And at this point we have good counterplay. Now there is... Uh, one thing that you have to know here, and that is that b4 loses. What do we play with black here? Um, I'm just going to answer a question. Atarva was asking after b4, why not b6 and bishop b7? Uh, yeah, of course you can play b6 and bishop b7, but the whole point is that you're not uh, active anymore. And white can just improve the position. Of course, you can. White will stay with a pawn on b4, bring a rook to d1, knight d5, and you're going to have a, a weakness on c6 sooner or later. This is losing for white? Yeah, this is losing for white. Okay. Uh, maybe we go. Okay, I'm just gonna. It's good that I get some calculations. Uh, <laughs> it's really awesome. I'm looking at this move to force the king to... But I don't know if it's working. And you're not really forcing the king, are you? I have two options there. Yeah, he can go here also. Uh, but if I move the knight 
I can't go anywhere with... Can I take here? I don't think I can take here. Maybe I can at this moment. Here. But to check here, he takes. Hmm. And then rook c2? Is that winning a pawn? Is it? Is it? Do no, he played rook, rook d1. Oh. Rook d1. No, but Jojos yeah. uh, has it. I have it in Twitch or YouTube. Think... Rook... Okay. Okay, Maybe. somebody in Twitch also Twitch. says uh, knight e4. Okay, knight e4, rook c8, rook c8, f takes c8, rook c2. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't yeah, yeah, working. The, there was, that wasn't the working. line was there while you were looking at it. Yeah, it, and it's not working. No, but uh, knight, there's another suggestion here, which is knight b3 and is the right one. Knight b3 is the knight, knight is the B3. very nice, very, very nice ah, trick that you have that... to know. So knight b3, uh, rook takes, rook, rook takes, rook, a takes, b2, and then the a pawn just once? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. The pawn just runs. That's nice. It's something that you have to have in mind. It won't always work, but sometimes it will work, and it will be really nice to get to play knight b3 one, one day, right? Yeah. <laughs> So this is the okay, nice point nice. here, that a4, b4 is a bad move, just a bad move. So white, if white doesn't have this and we can take on b3, open our rook, then we are doing fine here with black. Or if white has to take on a4, we are also doing fine. If white okay. has to do this, rook takes, this is good, equal probably. Look, can you refresh the board? Yeah. Oh yeah, I got it. And on rook b7, hold on, I'm just noticing rook takes b7 is an option, but rook a8? I'm getting back the pawn. Rook e7 takes. Yeah, I'm taking back the pawn. Because rook e7, I don't think is is good. Let's see this. Rook b7. Rook a8. Yes, and rook e7. I was just thinking that if I take on a2, I have to be careful because there's a check on e8 in the end and bishop h6. So I need an in, an in between move. So what I'm saying is that if I take at the end of this line, there's a check here and maybe some bishop and h6. Bishop h6, yeah. That could be annoying. Maybe I can defend, but I don't want to get there. No. No. <laughs> so do I have an in-between move? I do. I have bishop f6 and I have bishop d4. But I really wanted to um, skewer those bishops. So I'm going to go for bishop f6. Because on bishop d4, king f1, he defends this one. Mm. So let's let's go bishop f6 then. Rook c7, and now we take here. Could it have been an option for a white to then go bishop c4 instead of taking on e7? Ah yes, I was just wondering what if uh, what if I lose all my pawns, but I'm not losing them. So bishop c4 oh, here. Oh, no, no. Okay, the rook is hanging. The rook so is hanging, working. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. So he has to take an e7 or at least do something. With the rook. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not losing all my pawns. I'm taking them no. back with counterplay. Yeah. And there's another... Ah, there's another suggestion. Rook b7, rook a2 immediately. Does that work? Well, let's see. Rook a2. Mm. That seems to be working. Just fine. Rook a2. Rook a2 and rook b7. Knight b7. No need to calculate anything, no? Ah. Take here. Oh, but bishop a6, is that annoying in the, in the end? No, I don't think so. No, this is fine. Yeah. Okay. Rook a2 works for sure. No need to complicate things. Yeah. Okay, so basically this is fine for black. And let's go back to our game. And see the other option that Weiss has here. So we, we saw some ideas like this. And bring the queen to c1. And then there's knight b5, which also stops in uh, queen b4. And is an option. Mm. So, so here we play rook c8. Bishop takes b5 is an option that we always have. But we have to be careful when we play it. Here, I don't think is the moment. 
okay. because whenever white gets to bring, so let's say rook c8, bishop c4, whenever white gets to activate this bishop, this is not... Yeah, it's so certainly great. not so bad anymore. No, no. Uh, usually this works if this bishop can't get active. Uh, but here, so here I would stop the bishop with e6, but I don't have it because d6 is always hanging. Mm. And you'll see that Petrosian actually takes at some point on b5. I mean, we will have a line where that's possible, but he threatens to take on b5, but the bishop won't make it to d5 or to c4 in good conditions. Here, bishop c4 is is coming next. And if we have to, at some point, you know, if we move the queen away and this bishop goes to d5 and we have to play b6, then that's already horrible. C6, yeah. a bishop on c6 is just... I can uh, feel the, like, cramped <laughs> <laughs> yeah. position. Yeah. So here he goes rook c8. We have still other um, useful moves. Bishop f1, this is also quite normal. And now we switch plans, queen d8. This is what I was, what was saying. Mm. Yeah, rook d8, queen d8, queen f8, queen f2, sorry. And now he goes queen e8. And this is the point where he's actually threatening to take on b5. For example, if he goes g3, this is sometimes a useful move just to get the bishop out or maybe support, yeah, get the bishop out. Bishop g2 is a plan in support f4. Then here we can take. And it's different because now we get to play e4. b5 is a target the bishop uh, won't find activity. If b4, you just go knight d7. And you see that here on bishop c4, the bishop is not making it to d5. b5 is hanging all the time. Yeah, and d3 is also, uh, like not right now, but if uh, even if bishop d5, we could maybe... T ah, take... Uh, okay. Maybe, but he could maybe take back with the bishop. With the bishop, know, yeah. But, yeah. But I see your point, that there's a fork there yeah. in the air on, on knight d3. So this is okay. And here taking the... This could take a pawn, rook c5. Here white wins a pawn, but there is a lot of compensation here. Double yeah. pawns is probably just a draw, but well, <laughs> it it's will sometimes a be a draw. <laughs> good extra pawn at least. No, no, this is fine. So here what white does is go knight c3, just come back home. Now he plays b6, defend the knight, rook c2 and queen f8. This queen of eight move uh, has a mul multi-purpose. One of them. Did you what? Mm. You have showed me this plan before. In, I think so. Um, I think was I have... it in the Benoni? No, I think we looked briefly at some Maroxi at ideas. Maroxi, yeah, yeah. I think that must have been because I remember this motive, and I remember it looks a little weird, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think yeah. we've seen this before, and I think I've showed you this idea of getting the bishop to h six. Yeah. Which is one of the plans of queen f8. Bishop h6 is a threat now. We mm. want to trade that bishop. And the other point of having the queen on f8 is that you will probably at some point be able to play e6 and have d6 defended. And then move over to the d file and go for the plan with d5 if you want. Yeah. That's black. So here he goes queen d2. Bishop h6 is no longer an option. See how white defends against these ideas, these little ideas. Okay, so bishop d7, he goes. You see that here, rook b8. Petrosian is great for these positions. Yeah, he's very, <laughs> rook very B8, patient. Very patient. I think this is important in these positions. Rook b8, he defends b6 now. Bishop g5. Now there's a threat here on e7. And mm. this is important. Look how he defends with the rooks, with the pieces. But wouldn't... <laughs> okay, so this maybe wouldn't be so bad because we have the black pieces and all, but after rook e8, mm. can white just not go knight c7 and then go back and then ah, get a repetition? And get a draw? Yeah. I, guess. I mean, I know white may, may want more, but... Uh, yeah, for sure. But sometimes you are happy with a draw. <laughs> I yeah, know okay. what you mean, but maybe if, yeah. you, 
if you're actually playing for a win, you're probably not going to play these positions, no? This is just an equal position where white uh, sometimes can make a draw, like here, yeah. knight c7. Okay. Maybe, I don't know if we can do this, but maybe you could think about playing f6 if you really, really want to play this position. <laughs> no, the thing is that later you will play f5, so maybe if nothing is really happening right now, you can think about f6 and then you will go for f5 a little later. Yeah, maybe. If you don't want to draw. So rook e8 he plays though. No, yeah. he's just trying not to create any weaknesses for now or not just to to do it, to make any concessions. And now no knight c7. You were worried about this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he didn't want the draw. He didn't want the draw either, no. No. Goes queen f2 and now bishop c6. Mm. Okay, we we rearranged the pieces. Now we're defending e7 as well. Queen h4 and here it comes. It's time. Pieces are ready. Bishop e3, then you kick this out. It's really important that now he plays e6 and there's nothing on the d file to attack d6. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's in control here. Knight c3, now he plays first rook d7, and f5. There you have it. We got the rupture. Finally. Finally. Yeah, Finally. We, it takes a lot of time to get there, though. <laughs> yes, I know. It's move 30 and we... <laughs> you have to be used to this. Don't expect yes. this to go like, pam, pam. No, no. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. It's a... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, Queen F8 in a Benoni, that must... That, that must be really bad if you... <laughs> I, was, uh, I was misremembering because we looked for a long, longer time on the Benoni and mm. only br briefly at the Meraxi, so I just couldn't figure out where it was from, but it was from the same structure, so that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it was the same structure, yeah. and I think we looked a little bit at the Accelerated Dragon, some ideas, yeah. just... I think we did so too. A little bit. Yeah. Okay, so here after F5, uh, White usually takes... Is this a, um, a, a position that has been reached many times? I don't know if this exact position, but... Okay. Something uh, like th it. The idea is there, f5 is there. e6 yeah. and f5, or e6 and keep playing and then d5 at some point. Mm. <clears throat> and especially in the lines with bishop e5 that Lefong was uh, saying that he also plays. And I think I've mm. showed you these bishop e5 ideas, haven't I? I'm not sure, but now that you mentioned, I remember something. We're going to see them again. No worries. Great. <laughs> <laughs> he takes f5, g takes. Yeah. Plays here, and now he, he trades the bishops. Okay, I was looking at whether um, e, e5 uh, mm, here could be an option, but maybe... It is an option, but I think yeah. uh, you have to take that bishop first. Yeah, okay. Also, then we can put a rook in the g-file yeah. instead. Yeah. That's what he actually does here, rook okay. g7 first. Great. And e5 is part of the plan. You will play it eventually, but I think you have to be careful with the pawn pushes always. Yeah. <laughs> Don't overdo it. Just make sure that your pieces are ready <laughs> most of the times. Now you're threatening bishop f3. Yes. Plays king h1. And I think here e5 is already an option. But this is Petrosian. Prepare first. <laughs> Rook g6. Just make sure that everything's defended. Maybe d6 is defended. So we could go uh, queen g7 and then we could take an f3 again. I think he's playing if for both White plans. Does nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's looking at uh, both ways. Yeah, uh, the G file and make sure that E6 and D6 are defended and eventually E5. Because if Rook D2, maybe then Queen G7 is interesting. Also, this, I think, here your idea yeah, might I work. Have, I think, yeah, I thought that was the point of it. But okay, it's also just to protect a pawn. Yeah, uh, no, Rook D2 was actually the game. And on Queen G7, oh, but, but he can still Now defend. Queen G7 is very annoying, right? No, but he can still defend, knight d2. You don't have bishop but, f3. Uh, ah, because he's... Co yeah, okay. But okay. it's a good position. I mean, you can play e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. 
This is very yeah. nice for black. Yeah, I agree. Really, really nice. Oh, but he plays rook d8 here, very slowly. I like queen g7, this idea that you, you saw here. So Sophie was actually pointing out, let's put Ooh. this knight elsewhere. Um, let's defend the knight, maybe, rook c2. To show your idea, you wanted bishop f3 here. Yes. <laughs> the tactical <laughs> the tactical player in Sophie came out. The only thing I can do somewhat well is... <laughs> This uh, is what she wants. So uh, be yes. careful. Sophie will always want to mate you. She is playing the Maroxi, but she will always try to mate you. I mean, don't uh, <laughs> don't be fooled. Yeah, no. you want to trade bishops and play e5, knight e6, knight d4. That's that's the plan, no? Ah, uh, that's yeah, that's With a black. nice one. Mm. Because the knight has been good on c5. For a while, but oh, now that, it needs to that be... That knight is definitely getting to d4 if we can. Yeah. And this is one of the main plans. Okay. Uh, just Petrosian doesn't go for this here. Plays okay. here. Now rook d7. Ah. Yeah, I was, I I was wondering <laughs> if rook d g7 is the idea or yeah. queen d8. He actually goes queen d8 here. Okay. Now because d6 was hanging. Mm. But he's slowly playing this, and only now he goes e5. Finally. <laughs> and here white plays f4, which is not the best, but I think black didn't find the best uh, way to continue either. So what would you play here with black? I'm looking very much like after f3 this bishop is just like there's suddenly like kind of a few pieces pointing towards this pawn it's also well defended mm. but if we could get the plan with um okay we have to probably take care of no because i was looking at the plan with knight e6 but then he can probably take on, on e5 and then we you lose the pawn we lose the pawn um, but I mean, d6 is, I just really don't want to play uh, e4 because it's, uh, I like that. Like, he played e4 and he I, played see, e4. I see e4 suggested in the chat, but uh, I think, I think I, it you shuts don't want to down play e4. Bishop. Yeah. You don't want to play e4 usually. I mean, the best. Th what you really, really want here is, yeah. if, you, if you have to push a pawn, I would maybe go for this one, just to control the dark squares. But you don't have to do it, no? because you control e4 now. But just as an idea, you don't, you don't really want to push e4 and close your pieces. This, yeah, after f4. The thing is that after e4, you are worse with black here. Okay. Your uh, white gets the dark squares suddenly. So yeah. what do we do then? Rook so then, is suggested. I mean, what if we go queen e7? I'm just trying to see if I can defend the pawn instead. Be a little bit patient. Uh, maybe. No, here you can be. You can be aggressive. E4? Knight e4. You can be aggressive here. More Knight aggressive. <clears throat> How aggressive? 94, uh, 94, but isn't b6 hanging? No, sorry, b6 is not hanging, but... Queen! <laughs> Just because no, you said no. aggressive. e5 might, might be hanging if you go 94. If I take once, you, you don't have bishop takes, because I take on e5. What if we go here? Queen h4 is very interesting. And then if he takes, we... We maybe go rook h6, then, we have, then he can... And this is very uncomfortable for white. This is the only move, by the way, queen g1. Yeah, because he doesn't have g3, because we can just take that. Uh, h3, you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and also he can't go uh, queen g3. It looks like queen g3 would... Ah, uh, yeah, if yeah. he just take that, of course. Yes. Um, Here, just take the queen, because that pawn's pinned. This is what Sophie's saying. 
Yeah. And if h3? We just take it. You just take the pawn. I think you can also do yeah. that. And then the, the, the knight is hanging in the end. And the knight is also hanging. I actually have a four here, just going for mate. But, ah, okay. But the move uh, queen h3 is also winning. And then, and then you take on h3 here. I think white has to give up the queen now. So rook G queen g1 is uh, the only move. And now you can simply take back here. Yeah. With, with pressure. If he takes here, knight takes. This now that's nice. getting some... No, this somewhere is on the king side. This is a lot of pressure now. Yeah. For sure. So queen h4 or rook h6. Rook h6 first is also good. But okay. not e4. Definitely no. not doing this and closing the bishop. White misplayed this. Uh, knight e2 makes a lot of sense. But he didn't really uh, understand or didn't realize that there was still some danger on the king side. Okay. Goes knight d4, bishop d7, and here a3. And this is threatening b4. So now Petrosian goes queen a8. And he's preparing for b4 in a very nice way. If b4, <laughs> he wants to take and knight d3. And this is why the queen is here. Um, yes, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> and rook g2 in the end. Yeah. Very nice way of preparing for b4, right? <laughs> yeah. Just queen a8. Yeah, but here white uh, white had to go and bring a piece on, on g3 before white black can start with h5. So now knight e2 threatens d6. And when we defend the knight gets here, h5 is no longer so easy to achieve for black. And it seems that the attack will come to a halt. I think that's, that's about it. Okay. But he plays king g1. So now the game gets interesting. h5. That's a, such a weird move, I think. But I think he was just trying to get... I, I wasn't sure about this because he gets on the g-file. But on the other hand, he was maybe just trying to get out of the long diagonal. Uh, yeah. And of the yeah. ideas of okay, yeah, three, after queen a, that makes sense. Maybe, but on the other hand, on the g file is not so comfortable either. No, it's a, not a lot of good squares for that white king. And now h4 here, and now rook g4. Now this is already getting really good for for black. Plays here, and queen d8. Bring everybody to. To the king side he wants to be able to play g3 hmm, maybe maybe he wants to be able to play g3 but with h5 h4 coming i think g3 is also th uh, frightening yes now he goes b4 and this will be one hour of our final questions what would you play here after b4 <clears throat> Okay, so first thought is moving the knight. First thought um, is moving the knight. Like, and no, second, okay. th uh, second thought? <laughs> it's leaving the knight or taking on B. But taking on B4 is just, okay, he takes back. Delaying the inevitable, no? Anything. <laughs> so second thought is doing something else, <laughs> like leaving the knight. Um, I'm looking a little bit about taking here, but I... Where? Uh, on d2, but I oh. don't think it works. I was just thinking if I could like get the bishop to take, then we knight d3 would be nice. But yeah, I think it just takes with the rook, and then he exchanges everything, and we're just down material. Yeah. Um, then there's h3, which he can maybe take. Hmm. Uh, in, I don't know, rook h4. I just don't see it really evolving into any into much. checkmate. I'm just wondering. Uh, what about... Yeah, sorry, go. I think you'll have an idea. <laughs> oh, what about this one? Rook g3. And nice. then if he takes, we take back. We are threatening this rook. Uh -huh. And once the rook moves, we go here with the queen. And then there's something here that could be checkmate. Then there's something there that could be checkmate. That's about right. Yeah. There's still a defense. Oh, he plays bishop e2. Is it better for black, though? Yes. 
This is okay, much good. better for black. This is already much better for black. Yeah. Bishop e2, he wants to get f1 to run. And here he plays a very precise rook h7. So we can go to h1 instead. Yeah. Yeah. And here he plays king f1, which is a blunder. Bishop h5 was the only way to defend. Insane move here. Insane but defensive. That's hard to find, right? <laughs> it's hard to find. But I think if you find out why king f1 doesn't work, you ah, just Yeah, okay, left. because he has to go to e2, so... Yeah, well, what do you play okay. here with black? Um... Come on, Sophie, get out the arrows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna say. Well, okay, I'm looking at. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm looking at this queen check, of course. Uh huh. But then he goes in between. But I don't think that's a problem because we just go e three, and then he can't take the queen because then we take the checkmate and <clears throat> and we're threatening the rook. And if the so, rook... why why can't I just move the rook? Yeah. That's what I'm. <laughs> trying to figure out. Maybe you can just move the rook. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. But, uh, okay. What if I take, what if I take the queen and then go, but it's the same, I, um... Ah, and Twitch has it. Ah, I'm gonna look Twitch, at Twitch because Twitch I know we're a little short on time. completely has it. Queen what <laughs> if take rook h1 yes that's checkmate what this is checkmate. Ah, queen f4 queen f4 ah that's rook nice h1 and it's that's over. nice yeah yeah that's so nice, if nice. you see that king h king f1 okay. doesn't work because of queen f4 i think then you are left with bishop h5 in this position and then king f1 so this is the defense. Well, it's not a huge defense because black is still much better here. But it, you're not getting made it. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. That's all. So I'm going to leave you with queen f4 here because it's a nice it's a nice to, uh... to end this game. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice one. And that's going to be everything for today. I think yes. uh, we saw many interesting ideas. We're going to, to see more classical games first. So you understand better the ideas that you play for uh, with both yeah. colors. I think that's uh, very important when you start learning something new or just discovering things. Not enough puzzles in the training. Yeah, not enough puzzles well, in the day. Usually we uh, uh, warm up there. with some puzzles, but we skipped that today. So I wasn't in the... <laughs> no, no, because we'll get there because first I'm yeah. going to show you the ideas and see some games and eventually we're going to get to puzzles and yeah. since I'm going to be showing more and more ideas I can then ask you questions so if I already showed the idea then I can make it a puzzle but if you've never seen it uh, it doesn't make sense to make a puzzle <laughs> no great so um, are we on for next week I think so. We just have to check the availability. But normally, yeah. yes, next week, probably at 3 p.m., uh, our usual time. And I think we should end now because people yeah. are waiting for us. So thank you guys very much and see you next week. Bye. Bye.